Now at six, as we approach the 20th anniversary of Johnny Versace's murder, we look at the impact he had on Miami Beach and the legacy he left behind. CBS 4's Jim DeFiti covered the murder and its aftermath and reports now from Miami Beach. When Versace arrived in Miami Beach, the wattage just went way up. Tara Solomon was a nightlife columnist for the Miami Herald. He was very hungry for the energy I think that Miami Beach provided. And of course, he loved the you know beautiful environment. He loved all the, the pretty boys and the pretty girls. Sensual, tropical, hypersexual energy. <laughs> Were the 2,000 models right out of Central Passing populating the beach within that one square mile. Louis Canales was a promoter, dubbed the king of South Beach in the early 90s. South Beach served as the perfect backdrop for Versace and his brand. Versace was not only a master at his craft, but he was also a genius at self-promotion. His effect in South Beach was the same as Brigitte Bardot in Saint-Tropez 50 years ago. It also cannot be understated Versace's place in the gay community. He was an icon in gay life. Tom Austin was a writer for Miami New Times and Ocean Drive magazine. Well, John, you know, Versace, these huge gay icons that, that symbolize having it all. I mean, being gay, openly gay, and then having big houses and fabulous parties. In this 1994 interview with Charlie Rose, Versace explained why he liked living here. M Miami is cool. Miami is. Uh... A place where you can be yourself without r run, you know. In Milano, you have to run every day. Miami is cool. What does I'll, cool mean? Cool, yeah. simple, beautiful. The weather is fantastic. You don't have really to run in any place. I wake up and I work. I'm very serene there. That serenity was destroyed on July 15, 1997, when Andrew Cunanan walked up behind Versace on the steps in front of the fashion designer's South Beach mansion and shot him twice in the back of the head. It was one of those very sobering moments. You remember where you were, not unlike when Kennedy was shot. Versace was so loved by everyone and he validated Miami Beach on many levels. We loved Versace, he loved us, and he was on some levels our patron saint. At Books and Books Cafe on Lincoln Road, Israel Sands and Louis Canales reflect on the beach today. South Beach uh, always reinvents itself. It's very materialistic, it's very ostentatious. And, Superficial. And super, it's always been that way, and that's part of the energy and the charm of it. Yeah. The vulgarity of Miami is so, so strong and so wonderful, and that's what creates the magic of the Magic City. Today, the models are gone, rents in South Beach have skyrocketed, and the Versace mansion was sold and is now a tourist hub. Couples take selfies on the steps where Versace was murdered, walking tours, bike tours, and bus tours, all included among their stops. I could not be, have imagined it would become a parody of itself like it has. I mean, there's a restaurant now called Gianni's at the mansion, which I can't even make that up. Like, you know, the level's of bad taste on that. And next year, a miniseries on Cunanan and Versace's murder will air on FX. They spent months here shooting, including right here at the mansion. Reporting from Miami Beach, I'm Jim DeFiti, CBS 4 News. And join us this Sunday for a look back at the life legacy and questions that still linger since the death of Johnny Versace. The Versace Murder, a South Beach story, Sunday at 1130 a.m.